as a guide to full courage our people, brothers and sisters, to go home. It's a place of pilgrimage. And another thing too, when uh, I'm encouraging our brothers, especially the Rastafari community, when you mention the emperor's name, When you say Heliai Selassie first, or Selassie Adams is Selassie first, right, don't stop there. Say, may the blessing be upon him and his children and my children too. Because he lives, he, he's alive in the message, alive in you, he's a, you represent him. So he's alive, he's not dead. So when you say his name, always at the end of it say, And the blessing be upon him and his children's children and our children too. Yes, yes. And you know, it's, it's amazing because <laughs> the first time I went, I've seen the emperor. I talk about physically in the children. Physical and the people, it's amazing that that the cunning, what do you call it? They call it cunning, but I call it magnetic resemblance. First of all, the emperor is more than a physical man. The emperor is of a immortal man in attitude and mannerism. I have DVDs and documentaries you can't find in the West about the emperor. And one of them I have is about his world tour. And if you see how John F. Kennedy bowed down to the emperor, the president of the United States, how royal people around the world bowed down to him and honor him in such great magnitude, that unfortunately most people in the Caribbean, the only thing they can talk about him, about, oh, he starved his people, oh, he killed them. It's all despised. But these, these Caucasian people can now, who he is? And they only be talking about head of states. The things they go through just to be in his presence. And he moves so calmly, so peacefully, so gracefully, so, so, uh, the, in the attitude of the lamb, that the Bible speaks of the lamb of the creator. But you see that in the people of Ethiopia. And he taught them so many things about how to represent and how to truly represent them within Ethiopia and outside of Ethiopia. So he is alive. I am saying to the Rastafarian community, We need to take our walk higher heights. We need to now go home. We need to make that pilgrimage. You can talk how much you want to talk about the emperor. But if you don't go into the land in which he was born, in the land in which he protected and defended, in the land in which he, he, he rested, in the land in which he, he wakes up, in the land in which... In the land in which he, what, what, where, where is your faith? Where is your walk? I mean... Did you take your trip to Shashamani? Hatu. Hatu. Shashamani is much bigger than ever before. Remember now, Shashamani, the land that was given to the Rastafari community, is the emperor's own personal land. This has nothing to do with a state, with a government. This is royal land given to a people. Unfortunately, I have a documentary on that. Matter of fact, it's not a documentary. It's a document I read I have on that. Where it shows indeed that monies were given to the Rastafarian community in Jamaica. But listen, millions of dollars, over five million pounds were given to help the Rastafarians in Jamaica exodus to Shashamani and build a community and unfortunately the government took that money and misused it. And misused it. When the emperor showed up, we want to know why they which is bad. But however, I have documented where some of the people stayed and persevered. Shashamani is a blessing. Matter of fact, I plan to buy real estate in Shashamani. Most of my investment is in Gondar. But Shashamani is, is a when you go to Shashamani, it's a sacred place. To dwell. Beautiful, beautiful place. Shashamani. There are many other places, but Shashamani, actually, Shashamani put Ethiopia on the map bigger than ever before because of the Rastafarian community. In many of the songs, most countries, regular artists saying, people want to look at Kinawa, they talk about Shashamani. 
And fortunately for Peter Tosh, he was the only one that mentioned the creator's name, Xavier, in his music. And this, this, these guys come subconscious, never. You know, when the emperor prayed, he said Xavier. When the emperor salute, is the word, right? He said Xavier. Never used the word God. He never used the word Jah. He said Xavier. Peter Tosh did it. He said, you know, it's a lot we need to can now learn. Listen, I have noticed here in the Virgin Islands, on the Caribbean, a lot of brothers who have been in the Rastafarian movement have been cutting their locks. It's mentioned in St. Croix. They have their reasons why. But from my observation, a lot of them get tired. A lot of them realize that they got tired. Of, let me tell you something about appetite. Appetite is about feed me. I want to grow. I want to develop. I guarantee you this. If the Rastafarian community here in the Virgin Islands, forget about Jamaica, okay? We talk about the Virgin Islands. If they had teach the youths about pilgrimage once a year to Ethiopia, they think of cutting up no lacks. Because they'll be fed, they'll be growing, they'll be developing. I'm, I'm thankful for those who haven't cut theirs, but the ones who cut, I stand why they've done it. They say, I don't want to wear it as a fashion anymore. I'd rather it being cut and do what I'm doing because I'm not. It's like Christianity. Most Christians are drinking milk and not eating solid food. Like the scriptures say, they must eat solid food to grow and develop. In the same, like, like kindergarten, same thing over and over it happened. They haven't traveled to Jerusalem. They haven't learned the, the Ivrit Hebrew language that the Messiah spoke, or Aramaic that the Messiah spoke. So they're not growing mentally. They're not growing in, in, in the culture and heritage. So soon we'll be hearing um, about trips coming yes. up. Um, yes. yes. The number of people need to call is 714-7220. 714-7220 because that intent is to, to get people who want to travel with me to Habesha. And the beautiful thing about traveling as a group is best because the Caucasians are doing it. I have DVDs with these Caucasians in Europe. In a big group, they travel and it's spying out Ethiopia. Okay, um, what is this, what is this airport called? What is the name of this airport? Okay, can you speak a little louder so we can hear you? Here is Gondar Airport. Okay. <laughs> okay, alright. Video. Alright. This is Gondar Airport. And most of them trying to find the Ark of the Covenant over there because they realize once they get it, they can put it in the hands of the so called Zionists, and the next thing you know is that all hell break loose. The point is simply this some of them going there to really learn about the land and learn about the people and to better themselves in the history of the people. But we have an opportunity to go as a group. When you go as a group, Greetings. My names are Nia Karina Thomas. I live in Tampa, Florida. I love to come to the, to, to the Virgin Islands every summer. I love to watch Grass Maddox. Greetings. My names are Makiva Leah Thomas. I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'm here in St. Thomas, and I like to watch Grass Maddox. Fun. Thank you, Dr. Yates, for having Grass Maddox on TV.